Now recording. Now recording. Oh, I fucked up and took the screen away. Welcome back. We don't really have a whole lot on the brain other than dumb shit, as per usual. Sometimes it's entertaining, though. Oh, now I gotta find this shit. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, we have some topics here. Why don't you shit. tell us? Uh, we have some shit to talk about. Yeah, let's hear. Let's hear about the uh, M- the MMA. So that from, sounds hilarious. Like, from what I, from what I'm gathering, this is all on the fucking talk to a girl's side of things. So basically. She's like been podcast hopping. They have seen her on clips with like, I mean, just so many different fucking podcasts at this point. And um, I think Joe Rogan so, as well, if I remember correctly. Um, I can't confirm that for myself, but a quick Google search can fix that. Uh, but basically, here, what was it? Um. So I guess um, she got asked, um, like who she would like. Haley Welch got asked who she would like want to fight in a match, and her response was JoJo Siwa. I'm gonna see if I can pull up the clip here, but um, I have also seen some short clips myself. Was on um, JoJo Seawall talking shit or something? There was something going on with that. I don't remember. Dude, that fucking... That is a product of... Satan. Like, I mean, close to it, at least. <laughs> but it's... Like, I really don't know how to describe it. Except, like, she's a... Sp- Spoiled, fucking, just selfish asshole that just Yo-jo. doesn't know when enough is. Yes, she just Yo-jo. like doesn't know when enough is enough. <laughs> like I saw, I've seen so many clips of her just like out in public, wearing a fucking like blinged out like safety vest, like fluorescent orange safety vest all blinged out, and she's, like, doing this stupid fucking dance that, like, I don't really understand like, what she's actually doing with her body, but it looks like she's having a seizure standing up. (laughs) I shouldn't laugh at that. No, but that's the only way I have to, like, describe what it looks like to me. I... (sighs) But basically, most of the clips, she'll sit there and do the dance, and then she like, or, or she'll start singing one of her songs, the one it's called Karma, which is actually a stolen song, and she tried to take credit for, which a lot of people were pissed off about. Oh, okay, so be- she is an asshole. Yeah, she is an asshole. But dude, it like she's also claimed like <laughs> she was gonna start a new genre of music called. Gay pop. What the fuck is that? I honestly don't really know, but I can only assume it's like hip hop based around LGBTQ plus ideals. That sounds like it's going to sound like shit, to be honest. I mean, well, I mean, I guess it's, it's still about struggle at the end of the day, but honestly, <laughs> and, uh, I, I don't feel know. Like... It... I'd we probably have... give it a spin just to see. Like, I'm not going to be biased until I hear it. But it's very strange. Yeah, it sounds very <laughs> strange, but apparently it's already its own genre. And, you know, she's been called out on so many podcasts for stuff like this, and she, like, backtracks. It, I'm sorry, but she's a cringe lord. Like, indefinitely a fucking cringe lord. And she gets mad at people if they, like, don't know the words to her song or don't know the fucking she, dance. She gonna hate me, then, because I don't know a single fucking one. Oh, me neither, but, 
I mean, like, she's literally, like, she'll, you know, like, have her arms out, like, really? What the fuck are you guys, like, doing? Like, nobody knows what I'm, what I'm singing here or some shit like that. I mean, it's her Just job. So much entitlement. <laughs> so much fucking entitlement. Like, she literally, that's the other thing. She has, like, two or three cars with, that are wrapped with her fucking face all over them. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, she's Weird also flex. Fucking, Weird uh, fucking flex. A narcissist, <laughs> I guess. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's actually the perfect way to describe that. Narcissism. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And how taking a selfie is one of the most narcissistic things you can do, but putting your selfie on your fucking vehicle... Like it's and I'm whole like, another level. It's not, it's not like it's just one picture though. It's like multiple ones. So you, you know, every panel you can clearly see this fucking girl's face. The fuck? Give me a sec. I'm gonna grab a brew and keep this going because that's that's weird. Oh yeah, dude. I'm I'm telling you, she's. I'm. I'll get back to it when you get back. Please excuse us for this commercial break. I got myself a brew. Um, alrighty. But yeah, but back to the... But JoJo Siwa. Okay, yeah. So there's... So she's she an also, asshole. Well, she got like a start on... um, What the fuck? It was that one show about the like girls that did the competitive dance competition shit. Like... You know what I mean? Uh, like freestyling and shit like that? No, it it was like, like kind of cheerleading, but like more professional. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't. I don't really know. I just know it was like a really popular show back in the day. But she was a little girl on that show. And then I read somewhere that she was on Nickelodeon too, but I don't remember that. And I know she was like a real big thing on YouTube for a few years. So um, talking JoJo, yeah. Yeah, still talking JoJo. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, didn't she get her like recognition from YouTube, like Bieber? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I forget what kind of content she posted. It was like centered something that would interest like young kids. Yeah, was, yeah. She I started out some, like as a some, like toy entertainer like that. Oh, toy geez, another one of those. <laughs> like, I think, but uh, yeah, I. I don't understand her because she she was like it's been like a year since she's been on this fucking kick but she's like t saying she's she has made the most drastic change up in all of music because she thinks she's like a bad bitch now like she thinks she's Ronnie Radke oh <laughs> that's the last thing we need dude she on another Ronnie no, it's like she wants to be like a politically correct fucking Ronnie Radke. <laughs> Is that even worse? Honestly, I don't know. Like, because Ronnie dude, don't don't give a fuck, but he also mind. seems dude, like the kind of guy it. to lie fuck about it. random shit fuck to it. make it sound good. Just let it happen. Let it happen. Let her turn into politically correct Ronnie Radke. It would be really like, funny. <laughs> and then PC Radke can just fucking argue with Ronnie Radke. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine the fucking debate? Like, just, I mean, if they had, like, the same mannerisms and, like, the same temperament, but, you know, completely different speech patterns and shit like that, because obviously they're going to be using much different, like, vocabularies. Oh, yeah. Like, you get what I mean? That would honestly be so fucking funny to me. She used to get thorns tattooed across her forehead, too. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, Haley Welch is already trying to beat the fucking girl up. And here we are trying to get her in fucking verbal arguments with Ronnie Radke. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a win in my book. Oh, but anyway, but yeah, I guess um what I I don't know both these names keep popping up everywhere, but 
apparently either Sam Alve or Antonio Arroyo offered to like train Haley Welch for it if it would ever go down. Because apparently JoJo Siwa has not responded to any of this. So I don't know if she's even aware of it. Because she's uh she's pretty self centered. She wouldn't. Eh, that's true, that's true. But if word got back to her that somebody wanted to fight her. Honestly, like, like, into that. like I personally have no like beef with JoJo Siwa. I think she's really fucking annoying, to be perfectly honest. I don't even so, know what the hell she did other than children's entertainment. Uh, she fucking basically nowadays steals people's songs, goes on tour, and dress tries to like dress up like Gene Simmons. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding you. I'm gonna have to look this shit up then. Dude, it's so cringe. Like, you know you have really reached the epitome of cringe nowadays whenever Meat Canyon immediately hops on it and has a fucking whole video posted within like a week of the shit going down. I haven't actually checked up on his recent shit. Meat Canyon, is, dude, he is pumping stuff out. Most of his stuff nowadays, which I don't understand all of it, but there is a lot of it that the content he makes now, I know who he's like making fun of. And he's so spot on. He's like literally just laying out what we're all thinking. <laughs> like no fucking joke. Definitely one talented dude. I know. It like even though the literal fucking sense of it all is supposed to be royally fucked up. God is it fucking funny. It's kind of like watching Mr. Pickles in a way. Mr. Pickles it, was like that perfect amount Mr. of fucked Pickles. up. Mr. Pickles! Yeah. I need to find uh, out where the hell I can watch that again because I'm not trying to pay for that shit again. I think it's on Hulu. I'll we'll have to take a look then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Hulu. I'm gonna check right now. I actually want to watch Rick and Morty again. After I'm finished watching Fire Force. Oh shit! It's gonna have me. Dude, that's actually that. the creator of that show has another like short series. I think you could dip your toes into anime with. It's only like fifty episodes. Actually, I don't even think. I think it's like forty-eight. Hmm. Called Soul Eater. I've heard of that one. I haven't really like looked into it, but I have heard of it. Soul Eater is basically um, they're like. There's a each of them are a pair because one of them is like the wielder and the other one turns into the weapons. Okay, that sounds and like a really cool premise. They're basically like soul reaper, or you know what I mean. They're grim reapers, not soul reapers. I'm not trying to fucking mix up animes because that's bleach. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're basically grim reapers, and um, it's a short story about. The weapon of Lord Death's daughter. She is trying to... Basically, she's up and coming. I'm not going to spoil too much of it. I'm trying to figure out how to word it without spoiling it. But there are a lot of really diverse characters. Like, really fucking different characters. There's really odd, dry humor, which is right up your alley. For the most part, yeah. I couldn't get behind the office with its dry humor. I laughed maybe once. It's, it's not as dry, but the, there's actually... Speaking of one that would actually... Look it up just to look it up. It's called Ghost Stories, but you need to look up the dubbed one. The English dubbed one. Because basically what had happened with this one is they uh, were just trying to push it and they basically just told the voice actors just fucking make it happen. And it is unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's one of the funniest fucking things to ever come out of Japan. Like, there's literally, there's like, it's supposed to be kind of like a serious thing. 
but there's like a ghost and the one character is a cat. Just a black cat. <laughs> and the fucking little girl that's like with him, he's like, what do we do? And the cat's like, I don't know. She's a bitch. <laughs> and then she, the girl's like, wait, she just like disappeared. And then the, like flashes back to the cat and he's like, oh, she's a ghost and a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could definitely see myself laughing at that. I'll, I'm going to I'm gonna have to dip my toes and uh, check it out. Where the hell are you watching it at? Um, I don't know if you can, you might be able to find that one on Hulu. Uh, they do actually have a really, really good anime selection, but I watch it on Crunchyroll, which actually, I mean, I could just, oh wait, we gotta edit this out because I don't want them fucking knowing this, but you know, I could, I could account share Oh. and you could just log into my Crunchyroll. I think it could actually make you a profile too. Then you can I was just gonna save, say, is there a, is it like a list. paid subscription like the rest of them? Yeah. It's really cheap though. It's like six bucks a month. Okay. So actually, like both of my main subscriptions, uh, aside from my Spooderfy premium account, uh, it's less than like ten dollars because even my shonen jump app to read all my manga i think that that's like 2.99 or 3.99 a month it's really not expensive uh so bad at all yeah but i'm the kind of person that whenever i get into a series i don't like to wait um i blame that all on kingdom hearts because it took literally now, even though this kind of lines up with the story in a way, but it took 13 fucking years and seven months to make the third major title for the game. Yeah, so, that is, that is I true. I remember I you like were it. complaining about that a lot at the, uh, the uh, party pad. Because I remember you were showing me one of them. I think I think it might have been seven. I don't remember whichever one it was. You said it was one of your favorites at the time, and you were going through and just uh, beating the fuck out of shit. No, if it would have been at the party pad, uh, it was more than likely two. Two is my favorite. I've replayed it the most. I just know that Donald fucked everything up. Yeah, his thunder, it was probably two then, because I know damn well on just about every save file that I can access on that game, I have all the weapons, I have all characters maxed out, um, and I pretty much have everything done. The only thing I can say I've never beaten on one of those games is... Fuck is um it's a secret boss at the end, which is really not a secret. It was never actually fun fact. It was never in the original um release of the game. So uh they basically they and I love how they did this. Every every fucking game company that is gonna do like reboots and remasters of games needs to literally take the fucking, just copy and paste what Square Enix is doing with the Kingdom Hearts series, and has done for years. So they basically just port all the games. Um, now they've condensed them all over the years because of how many games there are. But um, <clears throat> basically, they, whenever they do it, uh, it's like an update to the game as well so like a lot of features have been added there's been a lot of content added um like there was also in the original like the date uh the what is it the uh remembrance tunnel is what it's called it was never in the original game um I actually think there might have been, like, a weapon or two. Oh, there was actually a form as well. 
But uh, yeah, and like I said, some boss battles. So, but they also the game still feels like it was like they literally didn't fuck with anything. They just updated the graphics so it would work with the like, you know, newer hardware. And just added some shit that the community asked for, like quick menus, you know, just some more content that could be added, and it has. Okay, so they at least was listening to the community. That's yeah. good. Yeah, and I'm telling you, like, I have, I have every Kingdom Hearts game on this computer except for uh, the there's a pack that has like three games on it. And I don't have it, but I do have it for my PlayStation 4. Okay, so you, in a sense, do have every single I, one of them just across multiple platform. Well, yeah, and I have multiple copies of some of the games because, like, I have all of the PS2 games. I have all of them. Like, manuals and everything. And they're even all black label games. Which is kind of a flex for me. <laughs> <laughs> they were not greatest hits labels. But yeah, no, I uh I can just say like it they could literally do that with any series. That's all it needs to be. Cause like I'm telling you, you can boot it up and it looks like it came out on PlayStation 2, but it's still running smooth. You know, the updated textures and stuff, like, it was just, it was literally the only way it should have ever been done with any series. So, kudos to Square Enix for that. And literally, for not fucking up my favorite video game series of all time, and making <laughs> it replayable through the years. That's always a nice thing, too. I've only got a few games that I can do that with, and eh, they're not as fun as they used to be, for sure. So that's good that Kingdom Hearts at least still holds that value. Dude, I'm even telling you that the replayability of those games has held up since 2002. Now, there's only... I will say there's only one game in the series now, and I do play them in fucking order, but I generally, like once every one to two years, I just sit down and I replay them all in order. And actually, since they are developing Kingdom Hearts 4, I should probably get on that soon because, you know, you never know when they'll actually drop it. <laughs> 13 years later. Well, dude, honestly how vast and how big and confusing the story can be. Like, even I need a refresher on, sh like, shit sometimes. And this is, like, one of the only games I've consistently played since I was a kid. Hell yeah. Yeah. Staple of the childhood. That's right. Well, dude, I mean, like I said... If they're going to keep pumping it out to where I can keep playing it and it looks better and they're making it better, fucking right. Sign me up. Shit, yeah. Meanwhile, I've just been uh, playing fucking Once Human, trying to get that shit down. So tell me about that. I've seen a bunch of stuff and I added it to my library because I saw it was free, but I don't know what it is. Uh, the best way I can to describe it is a combination of several games. And there's another one that developers actually listen to the audience. They actually have polls that you can, like, if something you want in the game or some kind of design implemented or some shit like that, they have that available and you can choose to do it or not. It's your choice. But okay. I would say it's, uh, it's got, a little bit of a Fortnite vibe to it because it's third person for the most part. You can yeah, name down sites, but you can like you have to like tap person. it. Yeah, it's it's not bad, and it's uh, also got zombies. And, like they're, I say they're zombies. I don't know what the fuck they actually are. Like they're just, like radioactive in a way. 
but it's called Stardust. It's been polluting the people, and then they turn into a tree. <laughs> I just learned that today. Oh, that's kind of funny. It's fucked because I now realize what all the weird stumps are around my base, and we're like, oh, that's cool. It's just in a graveyard. That's nice. <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh it's got like aspects of Minecraft as well. You have to find materials and you can't like dig down in the ground, it's just shit that's on the surface. Okay. Alright. So you're not like making big ass tunnels in the ground like five. Yeah, feet no. No, nah, nothing like that. But it's yeah, definitely worth looking into. It's weird getting started, I will say that. It took me quite a bit to navigate the keyboard a little better and like actually figure out what the fuck I'm doing to progress. Fair enough. But definitely worth looking into. And uh oh yeah, it also kinda reminds me a lot of Destiny because there's like there'll be events where like a big ass they have like siren heads and shit like that in the game. And they have weak spots on their knees, you gotta shoot them or Hit them with a ball bat, I guess, if you're close enough. But you got to take out the weak spots. They'll drop down, and they're like their face opens up, and then you got to shoot the hell out of that because that's the crit spot. Once you kill them, you get a bunch of loot off their body that helps you later, like craft and shit, all that. Why am I yawning? Oh shit! I'm not really sure. Apparently, you need some sleep. Evidently, it's going to be a while. We were talking about Vigi games. Vigi games, that's right. Yeah, I was talking about Once Human. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's free. If you're on PC, just go on Steam. It's free. It is a big game. Fair warning. It's not Call of Duty big, but it's a big game. Dude. It was like 50 gig or some shit like that. That's not terrible. Honestly. I mean, when you see the size of the map, it definitely isn't. I haven't oh. even explored a fraction of what's out there. Honestly, I would. I'd actually like to look now that. I just like to make a comparison, but uh, I'd like to like know how big of a file size Elden Ring is. That would be interesting. Yeah, that's a very I'm, expansive game too, dude. I have just in one character now. I probably have like some odd hours because I was, you know, experimenting with different starting characters, which is basically useless anyhow. It just specs you with a couple extra points in certain like uh, aspects. But that's besides the point. But I have 90 hours in my main character. Hey, yo. And I am, pr- like, I'm not halfway through this game. I heard it was a very, very long, like, long and during game. I will say some of that is being stuck on bosses, because I am not going to say I'm a pro at this game. Some bosses I have just breezed through on my first try. Uh, there have been plenty of bosses, though, too, and really stupid shit that has killed me. So but when yeah. you get when you get killed, do you lose any of your shit, or do you just have to respawn and try and go no. take them on again? So what you lose um, is your runes. Those... Okay, I think you told me about that before, yes. but I don't believe we were yeah. recording. See, um, I don't know if it was about Elden Ring, but it it was probably about Lies of P, because it has the same system. It's uh, yeah, it, it was, was it was Lies of P. So in that game, it's um, which they're the same thing, literally the same thing. This is one of the aspects of a Souls-like game. You have one currency, Lies of P. It's called Ergo. Uh, Elden Ring. It's called Runes. But what it does is that's how you buy everything, at, like vendors and shops, and it's also how you like level up. Uh, You also need them to, like, upgrade your weapons. So it's basically your currency for everything in the game. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Well, you rack it up by killing enemies. 
and obviously like bosses and mini bosses, elite enemies, shit like that, they're going to be worth more. And as you progress into harder territories in the game, things become worth more. But if you die, you drop them. All of them. You have a mm. chance to run back and go get it. But if you die before you pick them up, they're gone forever. It's kind of like that Grey Zoom game that Mike and Alex were trying to talk me into. Now your weapon and armor, that stays with you. Okay, maybe not fully like that then. Dude, I'm telling you though, and dude, the other thing I love about this game, so I've honestly, because it's my first playthrough, I've experimented with like, you know, different methods of playing the games like summons and which go ahead flame us in the comments i don't give a fuck <laughs> in the game, it's not cheating but uh i've tried summons you know like some spells different types of weapons like the one i used it for a pretty long while until i got uh my second katana but i was using this uh it's a big ass curved sword called the Bloodhound's Fang. It was basically just a control alt delete. You would uh, use its special move, Bloodhound's Finesse, and it basically does like a spiraling backwards jump that hits the enemy twice. And then you hit your heavy attack button, and your character literally just does like a flash step forward. And you smack them for an even fucking bigger chunk of damage. So it's kind of like a blink jump like when Destiny, except you yeah. actually melee. Oh, no, they did have yeah. that as a melee, did they not? With the hunter? Um, I thought when you knifed, there was one of them that you could, you could uh, blink melee. It was kind of like Commando Pro in a way. There was, it would have had to have been Voidwalker, maybe Stasis. I know between the Titan and the Hunter, both of those were, they had stupid melee range whenever we first started playing PvP. Yeah, but it's basically, it is something like that. It's just with a giant fucking curved sword. I do like curved sword. <laughs> but I am uh, currently running a pretty fucking, in my opinion, badass bleed build. I uh, dual wield katanas, and I killed the one NPC to steal his katana. Uh, because it has a ridiculous range. It is, like, the longest katana ever. And then I use a short one that is also good for bleed buildup, and it's good for the strength portion of my build. And I just start swinging them motherfuckers. He said, so anyway, I started swinging. Yeah, basically. <laughs> now, that game, though, it, it has a play style fit for everybody, which is nice. So, I mean, like, it, it is... And the other cool thing about Elden Ring, because I did play Lies of P first, and I did beat it. Um, I do like... I still like linear games, you know what I mean, with a linear story. But, uh, not gonna lie, fuck Romeo, because I was stuck on that motherfucking boss for, <laughs> like, almost a month. Dude, I was ready to not ever turn that game back on. Well, see, isn't and that just... also, like, got Disney characters in it in a way, but they're, like, really fucking no, weird? No, um, Lies of P is... It's a telling of uh, Pinocchio. It's set in, like, uh, kind of like a really weird European, like, Victorian almost. Yeah, it, it definitely does seem... Uh, it's kind of got, like, a steam... Like, a horrific steampunk vibe. Yeah, I could gather of the, that, just from watching you play a little bit. Well, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the enemies are, like, 
autonomic or uh, what the fuck is the word I'm looking for? Autonomous, like, like automated puppets. machines. Yeah, because yeah, they're puppets. But uh, it's a really good telling. I actually read somewhere that they're uh, trying to do a uh, live action Netflix series based on it. It's that good of a story. That would be interesting. And they already teased DLC for it. We're just waiting to see when that drops. I'm so ready for it. <laughs> it is uh, basically they just showed a cutscene of like a kind of like a view of the city of Krat, which is the main you know place where you are throughout the whole game. Um, but it showed just two red fucking heels clicking together on some rooftops. Oh, jeez. So I can only imagine what they're going to do with this. Because, dude, I, the va- the variety of enemies in that game. And that's... Lies of P is a very small game compared to Elden Ring. But how diverse... And when I say diverse, I mean, like, fighting styles... Yeah, combat systems are different. Well, not the systems, but they're just like... There were so many different fights. Like, and when I mean different, like, they were all very unique fights. Like, all the abilities were really unique. Um, And it just, it made the game more fun. Because, like, once you really... Because it really took some time to learn some of those (laughs) fuckers' patterns. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of trial and error sounds trust me honestly though I'm kind of glad that I played it first before Elden Ring but I will say back to what I was getting ready to say is I still think Elden Ring is harder Um, but I think it's more beginner friendly to somebody into like the genre of games Because of it being open world, like, you don't have to fucking, you don't have to do those bosses. Like, you can go fuck around, do other shit, and then come back to it later. Yeah, do all the side quests and shit first. And then go through and just decimate everything. There are (laughs) so many quests. Keeps you busy. Oh, it really does. But the thing is, what really keeps you busy is, it doesn't tell you anything. Like, when you talk to people and they, like, give you items or, like, when they're talking to you, you really need to pay attention to what the fuck they're saying. Uh, Cause that makes you, sense. If you don't, you're getting on Google because some of the shit is so fucking hard to figure out. Like It makes me, me wonder you, how the hell we figured Google? out some of the shit we did growing up in the video games and shit we played. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm just saying, man, how fucking... Uh, non-informative the NPCs are. Like, I'm you telling you, man. You have a GameCube still? No, I do not. I have a Switch. Damn. And thanks say. to our buddy, uh, thanks to our buddy Kiwi Dozer, I have a 2DS now, again. I'm pretty sure he has a GameCube as well. I want to try something if he oh, does. Yeah. I just need four controllers. Apparently, if you start up a GameCube and you hold the Z button with one controller, it plays a different tune when it does a little G. And then yeah. if you have all four controllers holding the Z button when it turns on, it does another tune. I was like, I didn't fucking know this, and I used to have a GameCube. Uh, I remember seeing it either on like YouTube Shorts or TikTok. I've seen a video of that. I just That's... seen it the other day. I was scrolling through Facebook and I was like, no shit. Actually, it might have been YouTube. I get sidetracked with YouTube a lot. That's like, um, did you know something? There's a little fun fact about uh, PlayStation 2. Uh, the load screen, or like the startup screen, when you first turn it on, all the towers. Yes, you know about the towers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but did you know, like the uh, like how big the towers are, or like how big the files are? Yeah. Yep. 
closer they are to the well, the closer they are, I guess, to your peripheral. Yeah. The uh, bigger that fucking <laughs> shit. Sorry, got choked up on a vape. Yeah, the bigger that file was. Yeah, it's. A, I don't know. These are they're strange. They leave like a like a weird sugary taste when you cough. I'm not a fan. Uh these things. I, I wish, I wish it was just easy to quit them, but it's not. I have been trying to slow up on mine, but. I wish I had never got another one. Yeah, I told you, you were dumb for it. Yeah. You told me I was dumb for getting the first one. It's like, yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Rightfully so. Oh, Yes. Got to find better ways to celebrate. Yeah, celebrate. speaking of, I had my first week at the new job. Hell yeah. I am no longer a security guard. Yeah. Oh, man. No more drawn pictures in the office. No, dude. Like, and don't get me wrong. It was, it was fun. I enjoyed my time there. But if they would have paid me more, I would have stayed. They ain't going to be paying what I'm making now, though. Not anytime soon. So I'm not going to bitch. All I got to do is drive a forklift around in low trailers full of fucking corrugated cardboard. Damn it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to send you this video. I'm going to find it because uh, you said you're driving forklift now, correct? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. What is it? A fucking OSHA training video? No, it's not. It's not. Hold on. All right, Family Guy. Gotta find the video now. Oh, Jesus, Family Guy. Was it the forklift one when it's outside the bar? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. There's a creator <laughs> I follow on uh, TikTok, Michael Wright. No fucking idea. Might, it might have been on Reels that I saw it. There are so many apps that have the similar shit, like, Instagrams are unhinged, though, and the comments section are even worse. You know, I just, I don't understand Instagram. I don't, I don't hashtag very well. I, I don't really do it that often. If you take a look at any of the shit that I've posted in there. There's like a two year lapse in some of it, and then it <laughs> had the account since 2014. And I have, I don't know, maybe 30 couple posts, 40 couple, if that. I used to post a lot, and then I just stopped for a while, and then I just occasionally post, just whatever, fuck it. Still looking for that clip, aren't you? I am. <laughs> He's determined. I am. I found it. Oh, shit. Wait, let me make sure it is. <laughs> yep, this is you now. Uh, For anybody um, <laughs> what the fuck wondering... Is this? The dude's name on pretty much everything is at Felonous Falafel. Guy is fucking hilarious. He makes all kinds of blue collar worker jokes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do the fucking active shooter training bullshit too. My that was my thought too. I'm like, you brought a gun to a forklift fight. Yep. Except he said, Haha, you bitches brought sweaty titties to a forklift fight. 
I was I was close. It still would have been Peter impaling the whale. Basically. <laughs> Dude, those two were those two fucking guys in that video were roided out. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Well, I know there's no doubt. But congratulations, buddy. Yeah, thanks. It's always buddy. nice to be making a little bit more bread. I'm making a lot more bread. I have you yet know, to see the paycheck, but I'm looking forward to it. I just, you know, for all the times I've gotten up in the morning and had that attitude of, let's get this bread. Can the fucking bread come get me for once? Agreed. And not throw me in the toaster. I don't like that shit. Yeah, it's too hot. I like warm, not hot. <laughs> And I will say, uh, I spent my evening up until about probably two or so in the morning out at the bar uh, doing Yu-Gi-Oh shit. And Damn. it was, I mean, I was in a tank top and shorts and it was fucking beautiful all night. Like, I mean, just absolutely perfect weather. Yeah, the rain came and went. I mean, I guess the fucking hurricane or whatever the hell was in the area is already yeah. dissipated. Yeah, which is why we got that little bit of fucking... Probably why we got all that cold weather there for a minute. Yep. I'm telling you, though, man, it was like 52 degrees I saw the one morning. Yeah, it was cold as shit out, but I was oh, loving yeah. it. I literally, man, I grabbed a... I'm glad I kept a sweatshirt in the car. Because I needed it. It was absolutely beautiful on that warehouse floor. That was like the perfect way to start that gig. Because you have the fucking bay doors open up when there's not a trailer there. Oh, and that, that air just wafts in and takes the heat right off you. I'm like, oh, this is so nice. I love driving past some fucking things. Dude, I'll tell you, Peyton has been a breeze. Let's see what you did there. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Actually did not mean to do that, but I guess pun intended anyway. <laughs> but now, I, the cool weather, man, like that, that is the best time to paint. Because you're not, like, freezing your balls off. And you're not sweating your fucking balls off either. So you just come out of the booth and you're like, fuck yeah, man. Just laid a nice paint job. And it also just, you know, helps with the overall finish. Makes it so much easier on the painter. Hell yeah. And then it's got to bake like a motherfucker. Nope. Not solvent. Uh, okay, okay. I was going to say. Nope, not solvent base paints. I mean, you can. It's not a bad practice, but it's not, like, a requirement. You can just let it gas itself out. Mm. Just takes a lot longer, obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I'm saying you usually just speed of, shit up. And I'm saying this is just, you know, the area I work. I'm not saying all solvent paints, because I feel like I do need to correct myself. Well, not really correct myself, but point that out that that is what I am saying right now. Before I sound like change it dummy. next week. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're at home using fucking, you know, solvent based, like, at least make sure you have a way to keep a good temperature. Because I do understand at home painters, we've we make it work. You know, we can't bake shit at home. We don't have them fancy fucking IR booths and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're like, fucking the hot, but they are nice in the wintertime, that's for sure. But yeah, but uh, the paint booth of the body shop that I've worked at, other than it always fucking leaving dirt nibs, no matter how fucking clean that booth was, fresh filters, wet floor. 
didn't fucking matter. Hmm. Um, oh, it was annoying. It was really fucking annoying, dude. Almost every time. Almost. And nothing you could do would fix but, um, it either. No, nah, it was an all-in-one booth, though. It was really fucking nice. Little mm. spray your stuff, walk out, turn it on, you know, turn the heat on while you're cleaning your gun. Get Smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Back then, yeah. <laughs> Except I had to walk off the property of where I worked. Oh, yeah, I've worked places like that. Like, we don't care if you smoke, but do it over there. That's actually the only place that I ever had to do that. Now, granted, thank God I quit smoking cigarettes a long time ago. They are not good for you. Fuck no. I used to chain smoke like a motherfucker. Me too. Whenever I would drink whiskey and have a pack of cigarettes. I would literally, if I knew I was going drinking, I would go buy myself a fresh pack just for that. And I would leave my current pack in my vehicle or at my apartment, you know, wherever I couldn't see them. That way, at least I knew I had some somewhere. Because that whole pack would be gone by morning most of the time. And if it wasn't, I was like, Pulling the last fucking camel menthol out of the pack first thing in the morning. <laughs> Ugh, is, dude, that's I just, terrible. I that's don't miss cigarettes. the taste of fucking waking cigarettes. up. Yeah. And oh, then yeah, the whole dude. next day, it's just like, that's what all you can taste. It's like, ugh. And fucking phlegm all day. Coughing up that nice fucking brown shit. <laughs> I guess oh. that's probably why I taste the vape in the morning. Give a yeah, fucking I, cough, and I'm like, blue raspberry? <laughs> I don't have that issue. Um, sounds yeah, like it's got a just like faulty vape. Juice up. Evidently so. I get some fucking real shit cans here. Hey, I mean, honestly, just because, you know, a fucking gas station or a tobacco hut Offers it does not mean it's good. Trust me on that. That's true. It did come from a tobacco, but technically. There's one of these that are local to us. Every time I've gone in there, every fucking time I go in there and I just buy one vape, he always, you know, tries to convince me to buy a second one because he'll give me a, you know, he'll give me a discount. That literally adds up to like two or three bucks. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, fuck that, man. But then he'll just throw a random fucking, like, tiny disposable vape in with the one <laughs> that I bought. Hmm. And I'm like, uh, okay. None of them have ever worked. No. <laughs> Literally not fucking one. That's interesting. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. It's just like, hey, thanks. I'm taking out your trash. <laughs> it's the one right up from Wendy's. Mm. You know, obviously, when we were working there, it was just easy to walk up the hill real quick when you needed one. I mean, I guess that's true. I never found myself really going up there. Very nice gentleman in there, by the way. I'm not knocking him one bit. It's just really funny. That all the ones, he, all the free ones he's given me are just duds. I'm telling you, man, he just wanted you to take out the trash. That shit he'd been chiefing on all day. And like, hey, I'll take this too. Hey, dude, I honestly, dude, probably got scammed, didn't know what to do with them, so just started fucking handing them out. <laughs> it could be. Like, honestly, no, my uh, my boss at the gas station, he got fucking hemmed up on some shit like that once. Like, three grand worth of them. Oh, damn. I mean, we put them on the shelf, and they were cheap. There was just a very big abundance of them. Like an <laughs> that fucking sucks. Dude, I, we had so many people just fucking pissed. I mean, fucking pissed. Coming back, like, I mean, two or three of them at a time, like, hey, man, these things fucking suck. And we'd go through, like, <laughs> 
almost a box and we'd find one that worked. That's really fucked. Yeah. So then he just took them all off the shelf and there was like a whole fucking wall of them in the office for months. <laughs> <laughs> so could be some kind of situation like that is all I'm saying. It very well could. You know, speaking of scammers, you know, I we talked about it before, but I kind of miss I kind of miss fucking using that store phone. To fucking, just just to fuck to with the fuck scammers. The scammers. <laughs> fucking hilarious. I'm, those people that you call when you call them out and you they get fucking them, pissed. Well, dude, they'll just, they literally just answer the fucking phone. They don't look at the number. They don't give a fuck. They just answer that shit. Because they're like, ooh, somebody called back. I'm going to get these motherfuckers. And after so many times, they just get mad. And, dude, they're very racist. <laughs> I mean, super fucking racist. Will they drop a Dan bomb? Yeah. Oh! Like, dude, like. Oh, wow. I mean, I mean hard R. <laughs> And it's not like, dude, it's not like they just say that word. It's like they always have to put the word black before it. And I'm like, yo, dude, chill. <laughs> like, there's like, what the fuck? Who hurt you? <laughs> he didn't get enough bobs of a jeans in the email. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, it's so funny, like. Uh, my famous one was always, dude, I can hear your fucking kids in the background. <laughs> oh, fuck you, you motherfucker. <laughs> and it would just take off from there. I mean, dude, they'll go on fucking rants. And then <laughs> there's just two fucking assholes in a gas station laughing at him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and even better, dude, we were always telling him our name was the third shift guy. <laughs> so they would That's just call... fucking evil. Dude, they would call the store all night. We never fucking told him. <laughs> we just let it happen. So meanwhile, he's getting death threats every time he comes into work from some fucking stranger across the fucking world. He never mentioned anything about death threats, but he did mention calls that he'd answer because he'd be like, yo, this fucking number just keeps calling and calling and calling. It's pissing me the fuck off. It's been going on for weeks. And there we are trying to hold it together like, yup. Because <laughs> they're kidding. pissed off and they wanted to keep talking shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, some of them, dude, they would just keep the number... And I don't know if they just got, like, their times mixed up or something, but they would sometimes call back to, like, actually try to get you again. <laughs> like, thinking maybe there was a different worker or some shit like that. I don't know, but... Maybe, probably. Uh, but that guy, who was a very unhinged motherfucker, third shift guy, dude, he literally... Was that Captain Cocaine? Uh, fuck, it wasn't cocaine, dude. That dude literally told me that he was blowing lines of meth. Oh, jeez. I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds awful. He's like, yeah, it is, man. <laughs> no, this motherfucker told me and the other kid, like, straight to our fucking faces, that that's the best way to do it because you gotta feel the burn. And then he'd do, like, this really weird laugh and clap his hands and just start walking away. And carrying around a dirty mop. <laughs> that was... Ah, oh, dude. And then, after he was done filling it up, he just fucking put bleach in it. <laughs> For no, oh, like, I, I'm telling you, the shit this man did made no sense. And I believe sense I in honestly, meth mind. I believe he was in the women's bathroom fucking doing meth. And I believe he was snorting it. And I don't know if that's 
does anything for you either way because if you're toying with that shit, I don't fucking want no parts of it. No. Fuck that. No pills, powders, or needles, kids. I've got Pap's Blue Ribbon. It's been doing me fine for just, you know, about fucking what? I guess nine years now. Yeah, nine years. I'm 30, so only nine years. Nine years. Only. Yep. <laughs> My lawyer has advised me to just say nine years. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually I can't really say that I drank underage. I did it three times maybe. And twice I got violently sick. Dude, I like I'm not gonna say I was like I had a problem, but I did drink underage a lot. Oh Let yeah. You, Let me tell you, man. I found out at seventeen years old. Why the old four locos were called blackouts in a can. I drank gin whenever I was 17, and I, I, that's why I hate it now. I cannot drink a dry gin because it's just like takes me right back. And then I went back and I tried another one like later on, and I only learned half my lesson. <laughs> so I learned to not basically chug a whole can to yourself when you've already had Jägermeister <laughs> and you do not go get another one. <laughs> you, had, you went for a two? I was drinking a second one. Fuck that. My go-to um, whenever I was broke, broke, and I wanted a cheap buzz was a Four loco, a Red's Wicked, and a fucking Heineken, all in tall boy. Dude, I'm that talking, was enough for, to get you fucked up and get passed the hell out. That was I'm talking about like 2010, it. 2011 Four Locos. Yeah, I never had those because of the caffeine and all that. I probably would have ended up dying. Well, dude, I don't know how I didn't. I did break my nose. And destroyed... Some Christmas ornaments. Like, you know those wire deer that people have for Christmas decorations? Aww. <laughs> Flattened it. Flattened it lighting a cigarette backwards. You were lighting a filter? Yeah. That's what I was told. <laughs> I got shown pictures of me laying on top of the fucking thing flattened. Dude, I'm telling you, it was probably about nine... It was probably... Anywhere from 9.30 to 10.30 at night on, on New Year's Eve. The oh, damn. So at least, at least Christmas already came and went. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year! Fuck your lawn ornaments! I... The last thing I truly remember from that night was... Uh, whooping my cousin's ass at Guitar Hero. And then I just kind of remember. Video of that remember too? I'm. Mm, I think I you showed me some that. stuff on the old computer, or some shit years ago. Again, at the at the party pad, you found a laptop or some shit, and you were going through the memory in the gallery. There was a pair. No, it was a camera. I, it was a camera. Was it a camera? I can't remember. It was. It was something like that. It was a laptop, camera, some shit like that. But we were going through know. old old footage and shit, of the just random shit. There was like a picture of you playing oh, uh, on the computer, no. and you were blitzed. <laughs> I actually have that laptop. Oh, it was the laptop then. Yeah, it was my broken laptop. The screen went out, so I used to just hook it to an HDMI cord to the com uh, like a TV. That's right, yeah, because yeah, yep. you were you were shooting through everything. Oh, dude, there is uh, there's a lot of embarrassing shit in that laptop. <laughs> Didn't let the NSA I'm, find out. I'm gonna dig it out. I'm gonna see what's in there. <laughs> Hell yeah, old memories. You fucking digging it out right now? 
No, hell no. I was going to say. Dude, that thing is probably going to be a nightmare to get started because I'm pretty sure it's still running like fucking Windows Vista or some shit. I mean, it's pretty old. It is an old laptop. I bought that thing at, like right after we graduated. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, dude. So that bitch is like 12 years old then. Oh, yeah. I mean, it still works. I gotta find a charger for it, which I probably have one. Uh, my current laptop probably works. That charge, I mean, the charger. I think they're both Dells. Or I was gonna say, I hope the current laptop still works. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Penis enhancement pills. I fucked that up. Penis enhancement pills. <laughs> I don't need them. Penis enhancement pills. So, dude. Um, unrelated, and I know you probably won't understand much of it. I'll try but, like uh, Myself. Uh, my friend, Rick. Uh, his son, Kane, and our friend, Donnie, that we play Yu-Gi-Oh! with. We figured out a very fun and fair way to make a four-man free-for-all match. So? Oh. We basically, um, we started, um... Like any other match, we just did high roll with two dice. Sound Everybody... like you were rolling some dice there. You're about to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Dude, I have dice everywhere. <laughs> of course and actually, you do. I just built a uh I just built a new deck to go to locals with. Oh, and shout out to my boy Kane. Shout out to Kane for letting me borrow his Fenrirs until I acquire my own set. Yeah, shout out. Anyways, uh, four man. But yeah, but um, uh, I know there's like a format where there are four players, but it's a tag team. So like it's a two v two. Um, we basically just uh, like I said, we did a high roll, and the person that obviously rolled the highest, they chose if they were going first or who went first. And which way we went around the table. And uh, let me tell you, I think just about every game we rotated which way the uh, order went. From like clockwise to uh, counterclockwise. So with a four man in a sense, you could technically group up on one of the other people and take them out. Yes. Um... What well, we also, we kept the rule, the very first turn player does not draw for the first turn of the match. And nobody can attack until it gets back to the first turn player. Okay. Because that would be some absolute bullshit. Yeah, well, yeah, especially if they, you got nothing so, to defend yourself because you haven't really had a turn yet. So basically it's a uh it's a way to play the game more strategically. So um you really have to think about like uh like a good example um one of the main cards that I was using in these matches is called Virtual Virtual World Kyubi Shen Shen. Uh basically what it does is when it is Summon to the field, everything that would leave the field, instead of going to the graveyard, it is banished instead. So you can't use it again at all for the entire game? No, it's just a lot harder to get stuff out of the banished pile uh, than it uh. is your graveyard. And actually, I mean, some decks it really does hurt because they don't have a way to recycle. Um, but it was really funny. There were two decks, or there was one deck that it absolutely just really hurt while I was powering up another deck on accident. <laughs> but it was also, like I said, protecting me and helped me a lot. 
but you know it's um but uh, like i said so after everybody takes their first turn and kind of sets their board up so it's like basically your first turn is just to like set some stuff up so you can you know see what's going on basically yeah basically like that and uh (laughs) we also made a rule in the battle phase where so you can attack so if you have like three monsters on the field you can attack everybody else you know what i mean so you can attack like one player with you know one two three or you could hit one character one other player with all of your monsters and just fuck their day up but it's it was nice that you know we were like yeah we should be able to spread our damage out. Yeah, um, yeah, I would say rather than attacking one single opponent per turn. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good shit. It was pretty fucking funny. I mean, there were a lot of really hilarious plays, and the games, dude, they lasted. Probably some of them were over an hour. Damn. I'm telling you, man, we had some good ass matches. It sounds like that's where you said you went out till 2 a.m. Uh, well, that was yesterday. Uh, last weekend, we were actually uh... out there until about. I think we, uh, we ended our last game, which was funny. We played four games total that night, and each one of us won a game. So we just played a game on uh, Friday night there to decide the winner. Did and you win? No, it was Donnie. Uh, I can't fucking do his voice right now. <laughs> I'm too tired. Okay, uh, that's man. all I can think of, though, is yeah, Donnie Thornberry. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just, it was honestly the most fun I've had with that game in probably years. Because it was like, you could look at the board and be like, all right, let me help this guy this turn so we can both take care of a problem like elsewhere and i will say dude ah there was a fucking game it was actually the last game we played um main reason donnie won is because of me and rick (laughs) so i summoned a really fucking badass monster to the field and basically the easiest way um to fucking get him off the field is to use a monster called a kaiju because you can use monsters on your opponent's field to tribute summon it. So Rick immediately outed my fucking big bad monster. And then at the end of the game, Donnie used monster reborn. It and monster you re- shit. Yep. Monster reborn lets you get a monster out of any graveyard. <laughs> he said I'm just gonna hijack this shit real quick and that's the game yep used it against me and I was like ah fuck I was gonna that's funny I was gonna fucking say that and then he hit you with the old Uno reversal and he like fucking it was, did <laughs> dude, it was just such a really fucking it was a really fun way to play like, it was super casual, too. Like, uh, Rick, he literally built a bullshit deck out of stuff. He's like, L- give me some of your fucking tins that are filled with your bulk. And that's what he made a deck with. And he was mm. literally fucking right. Like, he didn't miss a beat. <laughs> this goes to show he knows his shit. I've, I've witnessed him play you in person. So I already know he knows his shit, and yeah, there was, there was a lot of entertaining games that I watched. Oh yeah, uh, I actually did beat him with my new deck last night. Oh well, shit! How many I'm times have you beaten him? Um, 
So he's less he's one more, of the, the harder the harder people you've played against, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He well, especially right now, like if he would play his deck that he's like going to locals with. Um, I really don't know what would happen because I am. Well, well, I mean, at least right now, because I'm still learning uh, my new deck. It's called Mimigools. It just came out. And it's also utilizing an engine called Cash Tira that I... It's been out for a while, but I never played it. Um, But the two work together very seamlessly. Oh, yeah. I'd be interested it's... to see that four-man game. That just sounds entertaining. Just see how uh, it, how it plays dude. out because just from what you described, it sounds like worth watching. Oh, dude, I honestly I want to do it again, and I do think uh, we got. Uh, <laughs> actually, I don't think Mike did some trading last night, and he got a bunch of shit that he's been trying to get a hold of. So I think he's going to be playing a lot more often. So I I think there's going to be a lot more of those matches, and especially the deck he's building. It's going to be pretty fucking sweet. Hell yeah. I got to take actually... the PS. Fair enough, <laughs> I, buddy. I broke the steel at the beginning. I don't know, honestly, not bad, though. I lasted this long. That's what she said. <laughs> Why would she be saying that? Wouldn't it be him? Well, maybe she's just being encouraging. Ah, uh, Maybe. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm surprised I lasted this long. In aftercare, you know what I mean? <laughs> Isn't that what the ladies love? I, I, I mean, I guess. How did you feel about putting my wiener in your mouth? <laughs> Probably disgusted most of the time. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Wieners are gross. Wieners are gross. I'm going to take a piss, so I'll be right back. Speaking of wieners, we'll be right back. Oh, boy, I'm back. You are back. Well, I welcome am back. back. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to that shit? I don't know. Dude, now WWE is just buff Chris motionless. <laughs> it really is. Dude, I'm telling you, that girl and him look so fucking similar. Yeah. I don't mean I, it in a mean way. It's just what no, it is. I do not find her attractive, but I mean, to each their own. That's that's your thing. Yeah, man, do your thing. I'm not telling anybody how to live their life. It's just not for me, dog. Nope. More power to her, though. I mean, she's fucking she's rocking it. Yeah, apparently, you know what I mean? If I see basically anything about WWE anymore, it's her and that fucking... Uh, I think it's Rey Mysterio's kid. Oh, shit. Similar style? Nah, he's a... Dickhead, from what I get. Ah, uh, I was gonna say, I liked watching Rey Mysterio whenever he'd wrestle because he just fucking grapple him and spin all around him and shit. I'm like, yeah, that's fucking cool. <laughs> I'll never be able to do that. That's fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like watching wrestling. It was very entertaining for. Quite a while, actually. I never got, like, super drawn into it or anything like that. I wasn't a hardcore fan, but it was still entertainment. Yeah, see, that's kind of how I was. I, I thought The Undertaker was cool, because, like, my cousins always had, like, wrestling games. He's just got a cool name, too. Like, fucking Undertaker. That shit's intimidating as fuck. That is very, actually. I mean, yeah. I mean, to that audience, too. I mean, it's really, you know, everybody that has the edgiest kind of vibe seems to be the most popular. 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right there. It's always been like that. You know, it's just basically the times, you know, are what make, I guess, you know, what is edgy. Because, you know, shit changes with time. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. <laughs> Just looking back at the commercials is a huge example of that and how they've changed over the years. Oh, I yeah, know, dude. I know we bitch about like commercials and ads. Funny and shit. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, they it actually used to tried. It's worth watching, though. Now it's just all like, they don't really fucking care. I mean, they're. Like, dude, don't get do me remember... wrong. Um, oh, do you remember the fucking brisk iced tea snowman commercials? Yeah. Like, where he used to, like, piss the iced tea and shit? Yeah. <laughs> it's just. You know, nothing is... And I'm not saying it has to be like that all the time, but shit at least used to be fucking funny. I will give credit. There are some companies, like the sponsored ads and shit, when you're scrolling through reels or whatever. Right. It'll be like Grandma falling down the stairs. It'll cut to some dude rolling into the parking lot or something. He stands up. He's trying to sell you a car or something. I'm like, what are you doing? That's <laughs> fucked. It was funny, but it was fucked. Is Grandma all right? Yeah, what about Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel like a dick for laughing, but I'm like, that's clever. That's very clever. I see what you're doing. That is... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I do think that shit is fucking hilarious. It is, but I mean, I think that's the dark humor part of the brain for sure. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Dude, honestly, who, everybody has some darker form of comedy even if they'll, you know, ever admit it or not, but everybody laughs. Yeah, at some dark a lot of people ones. suppress it, and then when they're by themselves, they have a fucking chuckle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It used to be that way until I realized, hey, it's normal. So we're all going to die eventually. It's the only thing that's guaranteed in life. You may as well have a laugh. Honestly, yeah, I completely agree with that. Laughter is not the best medicine, but it's medicine. I think if I was dying and it could be cured with medication, I don't want a clown in the fucking hospital room. Give me my fucking med so I can live. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Sitting here fucking juggling chainsaws, playing with the syringe, and like, man, let my shit alone. Yeah, just let me be, bitch. Kick my catheter bag. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. Uh, at any rate. Oh, but yeah. I can actually say I like video games and stuff. I haven't really been. Kind of a dry spell right now, I'd say. Like, I yeah, like playing I... Once Human, but I don't find myself coming home, like, after work, and that's all I want to do. I don't think about it while I'm working and shit like that. I haven't had a game like that in a while. Ah, uh, well, that's what... I mean, I guess I shouldn't, aside from Elden Ring, but I can find myself taking breaks from just video games in general right now. Um, but I, I don't know. I've been finding myself just f slipping back into trading card games. There's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's more new and makes your brain work. Such as mindless. Really does. I mean, it, it honestly, it kind of is mindless while working your brain at the same time. Like, I mean, even playing on the computer, you know, it's just easy, laid back. I can 
kind of kick my feet up a little bit and just play some cards with some funny looking artwork. Shiny cardboard. Yeah, actually, if you pull your screen up, I'll show you what these little fuckers look like. Um, like I said, this is um so TCG is like America only. Um and for the past few years, the they have been releasing like yearly a TCG exclusive set of cards. Uh this year's set is called Mimi Ghouls. Uh they Mimi. are a f- they're a flip base deck. Um they're really fucking fun. Uh you also are basically doing more summoning to your opponent's side of the field and flipping them yourself on their field. Uh so their effects activate. So like this guy right here, Mimigul Drag uh fuck, hold on. I was gonna say I don't see nothing yet. <laughs> I didn't share the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So, um this is the final list. But uh this is in my opinion the main card of the deck. Uh Mimigul Dragon. Uh so when you summon him, he gives you the option to search out a Mimigul spell or trap to your hand, which most of the time you're going to go search for Mimigul Maker, which is an amazing card. It, uh, you reveal two flip effect monsters with different names from your deck, and then the opponent randomly picks one of those two cards. Uh, and the one they pick gets sent to their, gets special summoned to their field in face down defense position. And then the other one goes to my hand, and then I have the option to summon a Mimigul monster from my hand. And it doesn't have to be the one I just uh, selected for that spell card either. Gotcha. Um, but basically, while they're on the opponent's field, they wreak havoc. Um, like I said, aside from that, Dragon, when he's on the opponent's field, when he's flip summon he just destroys everything on the opponent's field, and then he special summons himself to back uh, back to my field. (laughs) So if there's there's shit there and you send him over there, he just fucks everything up and then can come back. They all actually do that. They do an effect once they flip, and then they come back to my field. Uh, Cerberus, which is probably my favorite artwork out of all of them, and uh, do keep in mind, we are getting another spell card for this deck very soon. Which is going to make it even worse. <laughs> but this guy, um, when he's flip summon, the opponent banishes three cards from the top of their deck. And if any of those cards were monsters, they get to pick one and it gets special summoned to my field. And then Cerberus comes back to my field as well. Um, now, Archfiend has two good effects. Um, when you play Maker, you generally want to see him come back to your hand. Because when he is normal or special summoned, you can choose a card on the opponent's field and flip summon it. Okay, so you can take their shit too, even if it's not part of your deck. Yeah... I mean, but you generally just want to make your monsters flip. Mm. Um, now, he also, when he's flip someone on the opponent's field, I draw a card, and they have to discard one out of their hand. And this is the... I, this is basically like the boss monster of the archetype right now. Uh, basically, when you normal summon him or special summon him, uh, you can add a Mimigul monster from deck to hand, except for himself. You can't add another copy of himself. 
And then during my opponent's main phase, if I have any of my monsters on his field and I want to flip them, I can use him to flip them too. Only on the opponent's field. Or turn, I'm sorry. But then there's the field spell, Mimigul Dungeon, which is really cool. It lets me search out a monster when it's uh once per turn. But it also has a cool effect that if um if any basically because I summon things face down to the opponent's field, it works with this card. Uh because any player who controls a face down monster you can't normal summon monsters, and you can't declare attacks with monsters that were special summon that turn. So it basically stops a lot of monsters from attacking me as soon as they're summoned. That's good defense. It's really good defense, and then I have time, like, and that's just the main deck monsters. Like, uh, this card right here, Sky Thunder, Zeus, he literally destroys everything on the field except it for himself. So he's a nuke? Yes. This card, as long as my opponent special summon two monsters last turn, I can just special summon him for free. And then, like, big, big attack monsters, I think it's like 3,500. What is it? Let me read this real quick. Typical Yu-Gi-Oh player not reading my cards. All right, so if a monster has 3,000 or more attack while he's on the field, you they can't activate their effects. And then this card here just gives extra material so I can nuke the board twice with him. Oh, hell yeah. Now, these two are pretty cool. Um, number I was going to make a joke there, but it's in poor taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's two nukes. Two nukes, yeah. It ended a war front. But uh, these guys are cool. Number 13 and number 31. So, basically, these guys, once per turn, they both can flip summon a monster. But while they're both on the field, they gain uh, two effects. Number third or number thirteen cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects while it has material, and my opponent takes any battle damage that I would have taken from attacking if I got attacked. So and like I said, then you know that works, and this one. Gets the same thing, can't be destroyed by battle or card effect while it has material. And my opponent takes any battle damage I would have from attacks. So basically, they are a really nice way of just saying, come on and attack me because you're going to take all the damage. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to have monsters. Uh, this guy right here. Kikanagashi Fucho. Uh, it's a really easy level one. He's unaffected by card effects. Um, and if he does get attacked, I can just detach his materials and he just won't get destroyed that turn. And I can't take any battle damage involving attacks with him. This Ooh. little bastard, this little bastard right here is cool. Um, she stops my opponent. If my opponent special summons, detach one of her materials, and it goes away. And you're allowed to use as many materials on that you can at, like, presently. So if you want to make it, like, five materials, you can. Really stupid. And this guy, he just turns into a big old beefy boy. I can get eh. him up to like 5,300 attack. The Bean Burrito. This card turns into four monster negates. This card lets me link summon into my big cards. They just had, they just had to make her look sexy. And then this card, because 
this format, a lot of cards are using monsters in the spell and trap zone as equipped cards. This takes them out for me. Uh, this one is a free, easy, just discard and destroy something on field. I like the name. Nightmare. I actually, I that have the Nightmare ugly. Unicorn. That looks like it's got more than one horn. Oh, that's the wings. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one, because a lot of decks play dark monsters nowadays, this just lets me special summon a dark monster from my opponent's graveyard. And then I get to use it for more material for <laughs> my big monsters. Dark, the Dark Charmer. Now, so these two cards. This card is a this card's a badass card. But this card just takes two monsters and then you activate its effect to use one of my opponent's monsters as link material for a link five, which is this card. Who also has the same effect that I can use one of my opponent's monsters. So you activate her effect, target this card for summon, and then I can use two of my opponent's annoying monsters to make a big monster. He's and I have kicking ass. I have another unicorn in this deck too. Kashtira unicorn. Kind of looks like a buff Satan from South Park. Dude, he kind of does. <laughs> They're like psychic cybernetic Vikings. Now there's Kashtira Fenrir. These cards banish things. So he banishes off a thing off the field for me. And he lets me take um, a card out of the extra deck, which is where your big monsters are, like this. And I just get to banish one once per turn. So fuck with me. <laughs> and I have a couple support cards for them, too, that just let me summon a bunch of them for free, pretty much. But oh, I my actually... dog is fucking whining again. But yeah, so I guess enough with the Yu-Gi-Oh talk. We should probably wrap it up here, buddy. Holy shit, it's already midnight. What are you thinking? Probably. Today? We probably should. Right. <laughs> well, why don't you send us on out of here? All right. Send us on out of here. At any rate, we All hope you've too. enjoyed another episode of Dads at Dark. I've got the dog bitching in the background because she has to shit. Yeah, she said, take me outside, motherfucker. Do it. She did. Now. <laughs> Still waiting to hear that outside voice. It's getting there. She said, it's getting, getting there. there. <laughs> it's getting there. All right. But yeah. Well, yeah, we hope you've enjoyed listening to our bullshit and uh, enjoy the information on you go as well as well random video games at that too it's been a pretty pretty broad I actually <laughs> i feel pretty proud about my explanation of my uh kind of new new deck that i built all on my own that really does work i'm ready Absolutely. to test it this week so but anyway you guys we'll talk at you later it's been we'll casey and dakota one. Toodles, bitches. Love you later. Bye.